transposing the water at each place where a finger of water stretches out over dry ground and doesn't go any further because the land is too high. The water would say to itself, I failed. We would say it was neurotic water. Just wait and it will fight away. Now when you find, you see, that there's, there's this predicament that I've been describing to you, that there's no way of transforming yourself to become this fearless, joyous, divine being as distinct from the quaking mass. When you says no way, this is not a gloomy announcement. It is a very, very important communication. It's telling you something. Because the, like the land is telling the water, this isn't the way to go. There's another way, try over here. So in the same way, Life is telling you that's not the way to go. It's telling you, the, the, the message underlying this is you cannot transform yourself. Is giving you the message that the you that you imagine to be capable of transforming yourself doesn't exist. In other words, an ego, an I, separate from my emotions, my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences, who is supposed to be in control of, cannot control them because it isn't there. And as soon as you understand that, things will be vastly improved. Now we can go into this. What do you mean by the word I? We're going to make some experiments in this on some number of different levels, but in the ordinary way, what do you mean by the word I? I myself. Your personality, your ego, what is it? Well, first of all, obviously, it's your image of yourself. It's composed of what people have told you about yourself, who you are, how they've reacted to you, and given you an impression that that's the sort of person you are. It's all your education goes into this, the style of life you put on, and so forth. But, you, but it's an image, it's an idea, it's your thought about yourself, and I suppose yourself is in fact not this, but is, to begin with, your total physical organism, your psychological organism, and beyond that, an organism doesn't exist as a, an isolated thing any more than a flower exists without a stalk, without roots, without earth. So in the same way, although we are not stalked on the ground, we are nevertheless inseparable from a huge social context of, well, to begin with, parents, siblings, people who work for us and everything. I mean, it's, it's just impossible to cut ourselves off from a social environment and also furthermore from a natural environment. We are that. There's no clear way of drawing the boundary between this organism and everything that surrounds it. And yet, the image of ourselves that we have does not include all those relationships. The point, though, is with all this, the first thing we have to understand is what I will call deep listening. 
and very few people ever really listen. Because instead of receiving the sound, they make comments on it all the time. They're thinking about it. And so the sound is never fully heard. You just have to let it take over. Let it take you over completely. Then you get the samadhi state of becoming it. And it also means that you abandon your socially nervous personality. Where one of the reasons why people don't sing is that they hear so many masters on records and they're ashamed of their own voices and think there's no point singing unless I'm good at it. Well, that's like saying there's no point my doing anything at all unless I'm particularly gifted at it, which is ridiculous. But singing is of course very good for, for you, but we won't mention that because it brings in too much purposiveness into it. It's like a, a child will make noises because of the absorbing interest of making noises. It embarrasses the hell out of some people. So what are you laughing at? <laughs> 